low, mid, high, um, advanced, low, mid, high, and superior. So basically, um, this just helps, nobody gets to distinguish. Um, <laughs> my world language humor. Um, thank you, Mr. Reimer. Mr. Reimer left, thank you. Um, <laughs> Anyway, we move the students from wherever they are currently on the continuum. And our goal is to just move them by level forward. So we don't have, we don't say to one another or to the students, like, our goal is that you get to this, you know, benchmark. No, We're, wherever they are, we're just moving them along this continuum. The continuum is defined by can-do statements. So at every single level, there are things that the students will know and be able to do in order to demonstrate to the teacher that they are at said level of proficiency. It's really quite exciting. Um, okay, so we focus our entire program on communication for authentic purposes. So when we were all in high school, it was not on communication, usually world language. It was on you know, translations and audio-lingual method and um, verb conjugations. But the focus of our program is so that students can communicate with another human being using the language that they're learning. And we do that by having them communicate <laughs> with other people in the target language, um, focusing on what they do know and are able to do. They keep um, a language portfolio with artifacts of their choosing so they can record themselves, um, they can write, they can draw pictures and illustrate in the target language. So they're basically constantly demonstrating what they know in the target language in order that they can use it to communicate with other people. Um, the classes are not taught in English, um, and it is not focused on grammar, uh, which the students really like. Nobody likes it. How many of you recall translating verbs right in high school? Was that fun? Raise your hand if you thought that was fun. No. Nobody thinks, oh, did you think it was fun in the back? Okay. All right. So, uh, so we do not do the typical Spanish boot verbs. Um, I mean, they do them, but they don't focus on them for more than, I'd say, five minutes, ten minutes. Um, so in order, you may say to yourself, well, if my son wants to take Chinese, how is he going to know what the teacher is saying? But the teachers are, have taken classes, and a lot of their degree is in <coughs> how to help people derive meaning from language um, that is not their native language. So uh, whatever language they're teaching, they're going to give the students just a little bit more than what they're ready for. So we call it um, input, input plus one. So the students, if they're at the novice mid-level, they're going to be learning just at the novice mid-level and the teacher will give a little bit more and a little bit more. It's kind of like having a trail of crumbs and just pulling them this way. So. Um, They'll be using cues, videos, props, gestures, cognates, and pared down simple language. We're a model program. I love to brag. People come here and they observe our teachers. We had a big pause on that from the pandemic. We actually have not resumed our visits, but they will resume at some point in the future. Um, and our teachers are very proud of that designation. They worked very hard for it. Um, and they host their visitors and they always sit down with the other teachers from other districts and um, discuss their strategies, what they're doing with their students, how they maintain the portfolios. Um, and it's, it's great for us because he who teaches learns. So the teachers really like that. How am I doing on time? Well, how many minutes has it been? Oh my! Wow! Oh, okay. Okay, so obviously this is my shameless plug. I personally think that the program is such a high quality program. Clearly I'm very biased, but I do think that if your student has an aptitude for languages or an interest in studying languages, that it's really wonderful if they, if they choose to study two languages at the same time. So if you have a student who really enjoyed Spanish in the middle school, great, keep going with Spanish, but they could add on Chinese or French. They don't have to make a commitment to all four years of which they could see which one they like better in ninth grade, and then they could, let's say, do the two years of Chinese with the four years of Spanish, or anything is better than something less. Anything more in the rural English department is better. We've had one student study all four years of all three languages. So 
that was exciting for me. Um, so we do have a number of students who take two languages at the same time, and they do extremely well because the curricular units are aligned. So they'll be learning the same types of things in Chinese class that they will be learning in Spanish class or in French class. If you have any questions, I'm going to be here at the end of the session after Dr. Wright's portion. Um, just so I can get excited about it, because one person asked me one question. Yes? You in the front row! <laughs> uh, so, big question. Uh, once they do cases four years mm -hmm. of language in high school, in college, can they do this like clap out of the language in college? So, my first question when you ask a question is why would they want to? I'm sure they're going to want to keep studying languages in college. But yes, many times there are ways that our program can fulfill the requirement for some colleges. Of course, I can't say for all. But during junior and senior year, we offer an assessment. It's called the STAMP test. And if your student um, scores a five in each domain, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, then they get what's called the seal of biliteracy. And many, and an increasing number of colleges are accepting the seal of biliteracy in lieu of or to satisfy their language requirement. So yes, thank you. Great question. Yes, many. I won't say not all and not all, but many. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. And now, Dr. Wright. Are, yes. Oh. Oh no. I was. Yes. I want. Yes. I'm going to give you. That's great. Yes. Um, you have, I got the letter home with the course selection from the middle school parent or teacher. Sure. My son has Spanish already in his course selection. Does that mean that world language, if he wants to do Spanish again, is having Spanish twice a day throughout the year? No. So the course selection has Spanish on there, right? Somebody checked it off? Yeah, it's already at the top where the teacher's recommended. So the teacher is recommending it, but your, you and your child can decide. Thank you. This was a great question. I'm glad that we did this as a whole. You were right. You were right. Okay, so if it said, if somebody hand wrote Spanish at the top of your paper, you can do whatever you want with that paper. This is like your new opportunity to do whatever you want. You can do Spanish, you can do French, you can do Chinese, you can do any combination, you can do a couple. Somebody just put that there because they think they're making your life easier, right? Oh, you took Spanish, you did so well in Spanish, you can go into Spanish one or two. But that's not what you have to do. You get to choose which language, and then the recommendation is from, if you're from Long Valley Middle School, right? If you didn't just move here, then you would get the recommendation for either one or two, depending upon how successfully your child completed the middle school program, but you still can make this decision. So Spanish is only in the schedule once a day. Thank you. Okay, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna be here for questions all night until nine o'clock, so even if you decide that you want to come back and you think of something later, I'll be standing right here. Dr. Wright. Okay. Um, hello. Nice to meet you. As Ms. Lasusa told you, my name is Dr. Amelia Wright. I'm a supervisor of, I'll go through my list again, special education, technology engineering, and also business this year. Westmore, I'm so excited that Westmore Central is going to be your home because Westmore Central is 100% my home. I was an English teacher here for almost 10 years, then I stepped away for a little bit to pursue administration, and then luckily they took me back, um, and here I am. So welcome, it's very exciting to talk to you tonight. I will be represent, uh, representing tonight, I'll be talking about technology engineering, I'll be talking about business, um, I'll mention some um, of our other electives such as art and family and consumer science and music, however the special education portion, if you have any questions we will be having another open house dedicated to special education with myself, Mr. Reinach who is our director of special education will be there. If you have questions though and, and you're pressing and you really want to get those answered, please feel free to take down my email address up there and I will get back to you right away. Okay, so thank you for that. Oh, you're my clicker, thank you very much. All right, we will start with business. Um, there are many courses, many business courses that your student can take, as you can see up here, I'm not gonna read through them. Just to note that they are required to take financial literacy, which is 2.5 credits. 
There are multiple ways that they can fulfill that requirement. There are a few courses that I'll show you in a moment that fulfill the requirement. There's also a course they can take in the summer, an online course. Is that um, starting next year, right, after their freshman year? Correct, right? So if financial literacy is not something they want to pursue this year as an elective, and then they start looking ahead and they're planning their schedule, and as you're going to see, we have so many wonderful opportunities for them. And they're like, darn, how do I fit that course in that the state of New Jersey says I have to take? The district does offer after sophomore year the opportunity to take that online in the summer as well. So it's just something to keep in mind. Our business program also, there's the opportunity to once, and I don't want anybody's head to explode, and I don't want to start talking IV um, because that's a whole other night of information, but please know that we do have a pathway, a career pathway that is focused on business, right, that does go through our career pathways for the International Baccalaureate Program. Okay. Yes, you can keep going. I kind of got that one. All right. That's redundant. My fault. I just like that. Okay. All right. Technology and engineering. There are also courses that they need to take that need to fulfill something called their 21st century life, um, 21st century skills requirement, career skills requirement. Um, and our technology engineering courses do this. We're so excited to have our kids back after COVID especially in an environment where we can have them hands on. When you are down near the cafeteria for your tour later, please make sure that you peek in our engineering rooms down there. We have a whole engineering suite. You'll see all of the giant machines and the tools, and it's amazing what they can make. Starting next year, or not this year, right? Starting in August. Um, if your student is a hands-on learner and they are, and or they are interested in STEM, in anything that mirrors something that looks like it's up there, right? Um, our technology teachers, this is what they asked me to say. They said, make sure you tell them, Amelia, that the courses we recommend for our freshmen are most of our half-year courses, right? Robotics one, right? We have a robotics team for the record as well. And they are going to the, the state championships as well, um, in like two weeks, which is really exciting for us. Robotics one, creative design. That's kind of an introduction to engineering, kind of like a soft introduction to engineering. We don't even call it engineering. We don't want to scare anybody away. All right, but they learn the principles. Um, it also sets them up really nicely for taking a full year course in engineering or one of the other engineering courses. Another thing they may want to consider if they are more interested less about the hands-on but more about the software programs that go behind the building and the putting together of the projects, think AutoCAD, right, is our 3D modeling class. Okay, and then on a whole kind of different track but still exciting and technology, you could also consider our digital video course. So they like to make videos, and like make people disappear in videos, and things blow up in videos, like that kind of stuff, right? We've got a course for that. But however, it's academically based, and it goes into much more than what they're just doing at home, I promise, but um, definitely engaging. Okay, if you're okay, yes, yep. All right, so those are the two electives that I specifically supervise myself. Please know now, this is a lot, this is very bad PowerPointing, so I apologize. All I did was take the information that is on our course of studies, um, our program of studies, excuse me, that is on our website, and you can find all the information you need about our family and consumer science electives, okay? Also, we don't have to go through just the rest of the PowerPoint, music electives and art electives. Um, I do not want to just read those to you. Just know that there are lots and lots of them and that your student, your child, is more than ready and we are more than willing and excited to help them learn and grow in those areas. I kind of feel like I get to talk about the most fun things tonight because I get to talk about the electives. Um, that part of their schedule they get to pick all by themselves. So that being said, I'm going to open it up for questions for either Jess or myself so that we can make sure that everyone leaves and feels confident in the information that they, they've been given. Yes, sir. Production and Audio Engineering 1 and Music Production Audio Engineering 2. They're both semester classes. They're taught in the piano lab classroom. Um, and basically they learn, they use, we just switched to 
we, we just switched to a new um, software program, and they basically, they're learning at their own pace, so it's not like every student who comes in is learning a prescribed, um, it's basically project-based, it's a project-based course, and it's highly differentiated based on the interests of the students, but they're basically creating their own music using Soundtrap and um, Pro Tools, um, things like that. So the kids like it a lot. Most of the kids who go into music production and audio engineering one have no prior experience. We have had some kids come in, and they have very few kids, but they have come in with extensive background because it's their thing, and they've gone up to level two because the teacher would rather you know, challenge the student and put them in a higher level class, but they just have to get permission in order to skip the one class. But the kids who take it love it. Um, it's you know, a great option, and that fulfills the visual and performing arts um, requirement. Yes? So some of the electives are more The four that I mentioned, those half-year courses, right, those are all open to our ninth graders. Um, let's see, here we go. The, and in regard to the chances of getting in, I think, Mr. Ferry, can I ask you about that question? Actually, I think you'd be the better one to ask. Um, he's the numbers guy, so, and he's the scheduling guy, so I want to make sure you get the most accurate information. Way, way to program the bus. Um, so, I'm sorry, I, I will bring you coffee tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so, uh, on that letter, On that letter uh, that you got home with recommendations, everything is listed there. It's also in here. So all the actually the only uh, technology classes available to freshmen are the semester courses. The question was, who asked the question? What is the chance? Chance is pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I, I would say tech is is pretty good opportunity that they're going to get what they want because most of the students have already taken freshman year and so they're moving on to the higher level technology classes. Uh, little insider info. Ceramics, sculpture, photo, those are probably your top three most popular, most difficult then to get into. Um, followed by some business classes. Yes? So just follow on with it. So you're saying the full year courses are not actually the freshman year? Yeah, full year courses, grades 10 and up. Everything to your to the, your right as you're looking, freshman. Other questions?
course, you know, it's, it's very intensive because it's the foundation for our other art classes. Ceramics, no, it is not a foundational course. And it's fun, and the kids are making clay pots. They're both fulfilling a requirement. Ceramics is a half year course, or one is a full year course. So, you know, if, you're just, if your child is just looking to fulfill graduation requirements in art, which they must, you know, they would choose different courses than they would choose if they were really interested in pursuing art. And, you know, it's, that's an easy one because kids know if they like art or not. They know if they like music or not. But really, what you, somebody was asking, I think it was you, <clears throat> you really want to expose them to figure out what they are interested in so that 10th grade, middle of 10th grade, which is coming at you like, you know, at warp speed, then you have to figure out for the IB which way you're going. So it's all kind of a lot. Definitely right. I do want to say something. Any any students in here going into band or choir, if you know that that's happening. Maybe. Okay. Oh, Hi, one. I, I bring one. it up. I bring it up because those because they know they're gonna take they play the saxophone, they play whatever. I'm gonna do that all four years. I know it. Um, sometimes they get themselves into a little bit of a trap where they, they're struggling to get that 21st century life requirement done, junior and senior year. So my recommendation would be, if they want to study, I'll do a half year of study, freshman year, do a half year of study, sophomore year, and then a half life would be that 21st century life requirement. This way, if it does, you really do want to get it done sophomore year, so junior and senior year, you're open to take whatever you want. Does that make sense? Uh, she wants to do both band and choir. Oh, we're going to have